Hello, the purpose of this video is to walk you guys through the steps of a flower dissection. So you should have your angiosperm anatomy lab packet nearby. The part that we're going to be doing is near the end where it says flower dissection and it has a label illustration. If you happen to have any flowers at home, you are welcome to do this. Um, otherwise, you can work on filling out the parts of the worksheet. If we look on the next page. Okay. There are two videos, one for a lily, so you would write lily, and one for a lestromeria, which is this video, and you would fill in this information as we go. If you happen to be doing a dissection at home, this last page is very useful as you um, separate out the parts of the flower for laying them on and giving you a nice summary. The other thing I like about this last page is that it connects the structure to the job that it does in many cases. So the functions are often listed at the bottom. So I'm gonna keep that nearby. So right here is my dissection materials. Uh, just a reminder, this is a scalpel. This is a sharp cutting instrument. This is a blunt probe. That means when I touch the end, it's not gonna hurt me, but it makes a good pointer or separator. These things that look like tweezers are called forceps, and we probably won't need the dissecting scissors today. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some of that stuff right out of the way. We are going to start, as it says in your directions, locating the four main parts of the flower. So sepals are what cover the flower before it opens, and at that point they're green, but sometimes they take on the appearance of the petals. So with this Illustromeria flower, these ones that have just the hint of green right here at the tips, these are actually the sepals. So these, if we look at the back side of them, they've got that green showing. So I'm gonna take that off. That's a sepal that would have covered the flower. That's a sepal. And that is a sepal. So we ended up with three sepals. Okay, and they protect the developing flower. Now what's left, whoops, and that'll happen, stuff will fall off as we go through this. Now we're looking for the petals. So that's gonna be these three structures. Okay, so there's petal number one, petal number two, and again, I'm losing some of my other parts as this is happening. And petal number three, if I can get it off there. There we go, okay. So we had three petals that we can see there in the upper corner, and they're a little bit more decorative. Remember that the purpose of the petal is to attract the pollinator. Now what's left, okay, is I'm going to pull this leaf out of the way to make this a little bit more straight, easy to see what's going on here. So get the leaf out of the way. So, so far we've lost three of the stamen. So we've got one, two, three stamen. Okay. And I'm going to see if I can get the other ones off. Stamen number four, stamen number five, okay. and this is stamen number six. And we were really lucky because, I'm going to set that to the side and bring this up a little bit, all six of our stamen still have both pieces. So when we are learning about stamen, which is the male reproductive structure, it contains the male gametophyte, where we're going to have the sperm being made, this part is called the anther, and this part is, excuse me, I pointed to the wrong thing. This part is called the filament, this part is called the anther. So these brown tips are actually where the pollen is being made, and inside each pollen is where the sperm cells are gonna be. So we had six stamens. I'm gonna move those out of the way. And I'm actually gonna cut the last one because on our summary sheet, we can separate the um, filament from the anther, which is the part I'm picking up right now. Okay, get the petals out of the way here. So we're down to the fourth and remaining part. So now we are looking for the carpal. So the carpal is typically located in the center, which is exactly what has happened here. If we look, we have this long, skinny tube coming up, and then the end is a little bit specialized. So this end area where, if I don't know if it'll focus, let's see if it'll do that. Can you kind of see that there's a little bit of a line or a division? I'm trying to get the right light level. Good there. Nope, can't quite get. A little bit of a 
division. This is the stigma. The stigma is designed to um, capture the pollen that gets released from the male parts of the plant. And then the pollen springs open and the sperm, they start to dig their way down this long tube. This long tube is called the style. At the base of the style is the ovary. And I'm gonna cut open this area in just a second and we're gonna see if we can see any smaller structures called ovules on the inside. So again, stigma, style, ovary. I'm actually gonna to try to lower my camera while I'm doing this here, let's see. So I'm gonna separate the style that out of the way and usually the best way to try to see into the ovary we find the camera lens there is to do like not quite half but maybe one third and two thirds so I'm gonna try a slice where I am cutting approximately one third from two thirds oh I might have gotten a little bit let's see if I can zoom in on the camera there. Okay, we'll try to get the camera to stop bouncing. All right, so what we're looking at, and I'm going to open it up a little bit more. Do you see this paler tissue? If the camera can resolve focus, there's actually some smaller structures called ovules there. Um, again, I'm going to try to slice that just a little bit further. Uh, now we can almost, I can see it. Let's see if we can make it so you guys can see it at home. Oh, nice. Very nice. Okay. So do you see these things that almost look like, a, I mean, it's now it's focusing. I'm going to say it and then I'm going to pull this out of the way. They look like little kind of jelly like balloons. All right. Come on, autofocus. You can do it. All right. So I'm not going to point, but again, towards the upper, there's kind of a row of like three kind of shiny cream colored. Those are the individual ovules. So often they're located in rows going up and down the length of the ovary. For example, if we go back to the picture that was provided to you guys, you can see that row like that's what we were just looking at. I'm going to hold it up one more time. Come on, autofocus. It's hard to autofocus. I've got a, a hanging camera display here and it's not wanting. Oh, there we go. One last time. So we can see those ovaries very nicely within the ovule. Each ovary contains, excuse me, each ovule contains eggs and we are capable of um, each one can form its own seed. So now I'm going to move this out of the way and I am going to show you, I'm going to zoom up a little bit okay so we have our sepals next to our petals we have most of our stamen though I did dissect one anther from one filament and over here I kind of crossed the line because most of this is the style but the tip right here is the stigma and I tried to do the same thing on this side we've got the whole round thing as the ovary but those individual dots were the ovules um, hopefully you enjoyed this dissection of a flower and understand the anatomy just a little bit better. Have a great day, guys.